So today we're just going to go over a basic machine overview of how capsule fillers work. So again, this is on a 2000 machine, but on any of our capsule fillers, it's going to be basically the same. So we start with a capsule hopper here. So capsules, as you may or may not know, they come already together. They come in what we call pre-locked state, so they come apart really easy. But then if you bump them together, then they become locked. So now it's harder to open up. So we have different sizes of capsules. Right now we're running double zero. You can see on the magazines here. So how it works is, so these are what we call the magazines. They're gonna reciprocate up and down and the capsules are gonna fall down these channels. You can see down here we have little clips that are gonna stop them from continually to fall. But as these magazines come down, they're gonna hit the trip cam here. That gate right here is gonna open up and it's gonna release a capsule down into our sorting block here. So as I walk, I'll rotate the machine now and you can watch that happen. So the capsules come out, they rotate. Come down. You can see here, depending on which direction they fell down the chute, they're going to stay on top of the sorting forks or on the bottom of the sorting forks. So it so happens that this capsule right here stood body up or cap up when it rotated, and that's why the body's out. And this is the same thing true as the cap was down and rotated, so now it's on the bottom side of the fork. But at this point, all the bodies are facing out. Next motion, the front forks here are gonna come down and finish making that rotation and feed into the segments. Take more time, one more time. Okay, so you can hear. So there's vacuum being applied. The way right here is a vacuum chute. It's coming up and making a good seal along the bottom of our segment. And that's what's gonna pull our capsules apart. So you can see as it rotates around, it's gonna lift up. So the cap of that capsule is gonna stay in the top half and the body is gonna slide through into the bottom segment. And now they're gonna be separated. So now as these segments come across to here, and here the next station, we're gonna come over to our, what we call the dosing station. Dosing station is consistent of a powder hopper, which has an auger blade in it, which controls the powder flow. So we have a sensor down here that's gonna sense the powder. So if there's no powder being sensed, the auger's gonna rotate, and it's gonna force powder down inside of what we call the dosing area. So in this dosing bowl, it's gonna have a layer of powder, and these pins, we can rotate the machine again, the pins are going to come up and down, and when they're up, the disc right here is rotating, and then it's going to come down, and the pins are going to pack that powder. So it's hard to see down in here now, but as the pins come down, they're going to come in and pack the powder, it's going to lift up, the disc is going to rotate, and these same pins are going to come down and pack a second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time until that slug that's hopefully formed in that disc is gonna get transferred out into the bottom half of the capsule. Here is just a, on a 1200 a dosing section with some of the parts missing so it's easier to see. Right here's what we were talking about as far as tamping stations go. There's gonna be a set of pins that are going in the station and as this comes up and down, these pins are gonna come down and penetrate the disc. And this is what's gonna go in and pack our powder as this head comes up and down. So depending on how far down these pins are set, is how far down they're gonna penetrate. And as again, that's gonna be how much pressure we're gonna put on that product. And hopefully that's what's gonna determine the capsule weight. Well, one way we get our weight, which is our main way, is our tamping stations. So how far down we have our pins is gonna be packed away. So remember how this thing works, is we transferred here, the disc is rotating. Now our holes in that disc are gonna be empty so we're gonna pack on, pack an empty hole, pretty much. So normally this station right here is gonna be our lowest point, which on this machine, it depends on the powder, but maybe if I don't know what powder I'm running, I'm starting here, maybe like at 20. And this one maybe be at uh, 15, 10, five, zero. But again, that's just a generic setup, but it's kind of like a circular staircase, working our way up, and then we finally transfer our leg out. So our camping pins are our main way to get weight. Our next way is how thick that dosing disc is. So those are sold in different thicknesses, so depending on how much our slug is. The other way is we do is how much powder is actually in our dosing bowl, and that'll be our height of our sensor in here. So you can lower and raise that. 
One thing about raise and lower the sensor, that can affect capsule weight inconsistencies. Meaning if we try to go too thin a layer of powder in here, our weights will be more consistent typically. And if we do a lot, then our capsules will be more consistent, but then we may start to get some spillage and the machine will run a lot dirtier. So the other last way to get weight is speed. Speed will affect certain powders. So the slower you go, typically the heavier the weight, faster the lighter. But again, some powders are tending to stick more in the middle and they need it to spread out. And sometimes speed helps that. And so the speed of the weight will go up as the speed increases. So it just really depends on your powder that you're running. But as our capsules get filled, transferred into our segment, now we're gonna go on to our next station, which is our faulty capsule station. So this is checking to see if a capsule is still hanging down and didn't separate. These pins, as we watch, as I jog it around, they're gonna come down and see if there's a capsule attached. No capsule attached, it's not going to push it out. If a capsule was attached, these pins would come up and push it out and then it would get sucked away. Then, as it comes around here, the next station is not doing anything, it's coming back together here. At this station, we have pins that are going to come up against this counterfoot here and it's going to finally lock those capsules together. So I'm going to watch it here. The capsules come up, they push up against this top plate and they finally come along. Our finished product station, our ejection station, so the pins come up here, the capsules are getting lifted out of this segment, there's gonna be compressed air applied at the time when they're at the top, and it's gonna shoot out the chute. They come around, pins come up, air blows, they get ejected out. Now the next station is cleaning station, so there's pins that are gonna come up, into our bottom segment, they're going to blow compressed air as well as have suction applied on top to try to clean out any residue that may be left over in the boards of the capsules or in the segments before they get filled again. So if you want to watch that, pins go down, pins are going to come out, and, get blown. and then the process starts over.